Hey, how's it going? And today I'm excited to bring you this tutorial on creating some basic dust particles. I looked around on YouTube and I couldn't really find anything showing how to make dust particles. It's really not that hard and there's different ways to do it. This is just the way that I'm doing it. I kind of experimented around. This is just kind of a quick and easy way to create a dust particle effect. Don't think that this is the only way to do it. There's other ways. And if you know of a better way, please feel free to share a tutorial on, on how you do it. To get started here in Lightwave, we're actually in 2019. You can do this in any version of Lightwave. Just to get started, I'm going to come down here to the frame count and change it to 500. And do that. And then the uh, the next thing we're going to do, it's, it's pretty straightforward. There's just a maybe, I don't know, maybe 15 steps to doing this. And then I'll actually, when I'm done with this, I'll take you into the video editing program and go all the way through. That'll kind of be like in the later part of this. So just to show you how I do the whole thing from the start to finish. Anyway, so then we go into FX tools and then we come down here to add emitter and we just left click on that and we just go okay. And then this window comes up and we just have to make a few settings here. I have a different way of doing this. There's other ways of doing it, like I said. So actually I'm gonna keep all the default settings here and all we're gonna change here is on nozzle, we're gonna change that to box. And that's all we're gonna do. Then we're gonna go over to the particle tab and all we're going to do here is we're gonna keep these all default except we're gonna change the particle resistance to point two, and this is what uh, it's like air resistance. So if you lower this number, the particles are freer to float. And then for lifetime, of course, they're only gonna last for 60 frames. That's not long enough. This is gonna be 500 frames. I'm just gonna say a thousand <laughs> just to be on the safe side, but probably 600 is fine. We're gonna leave everything else the same. Then we're gonna go to the motion tab. We're gonna leave pretty much everything the same here. There's only three settings we're gonna adjust here. On uh, X velocity, I'm just hit 0.1, which will be 100 mm. And on Y, just hit 0.25, and that'll be 250 mm. And then all we're gonna do here is on vibration, we just want a little bit of vibration. We're gonna hit 0.1 there and go enter. And believe it or not, that's all we gotta do for our FX emitter. Now, if we hit play, that's kind of what we get. Now that's not anywhere close to floating particles yet. So a lot of this is you can actually just come in here and play around with the FX emitter until you can get it to look like you think floating dust particles should look like. A lot of it's just playing around and tweaking it. Like I said, these settings are not carved in stone and so feel free to experiment. Okay, once that's done, then we're gonna first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the render tab and this is an important step. We're gonna go to render properties. We're gonna go to volumetrics and whenever we're using hyperboxes, we gotta make sure we put on use legacy volumetrics or otherwise you're not gonna see anything. And then we close that, okay? And then once we're done with that, we're gonna go into backdrop. We're gonna turn off gradient backdrop. We're gonna go into legacy volumetrics. We're gonna go add legacy volumetrics. We're gonna go hypervoxels, click that. Then we're gonna double click this and then this comes up. And all we have to do here is click on emitter and click activate. And then all we do is we just have a few more settings and we're done, believe it or not. For hypervoxels on the object type, we're gonna change that to sprite. And then on the particle size, we're going to change that to 10 mm. And then we want some size variation, so we're just gonna put in 50% there. And then on the stretch direction, we're gonna do velocity, and uh, align the path, we'll leave that. I believe um, that's it for that. And then we go to the shading tab. We'll leave the color, that kind of off white uh, color, but again, that could be any color you want. And again, on these settings, these are just the ones that I thought looked pretty good. You can again, play around with these. So I'm just gonna put in 31.5, and then I'm going to put in for opacity, I'm gonna put in 30%. And for density, again, these are just tweaks that I came up with. I put in 87. You could put in any other number that you think looks right. We're done there. And then we're gonna go into hypertexture and we're gonna leave it on crumple. We're gonna change our frequencies to 12 and we're gonna change our texture amplitude to 100. And I think that's it. We're gonna leave uh, everything else the same. And that's that. Now, if we look at this effect right now, we don't really see anything. It's kind of doing what it was doing 
before. Okay, so now we just have some settings to make this work. I'm using, I feel like I'm cheating a little bit because what'll happen is the FX emitter is gonna emit these particles and we're gonna scale them up and it's gonna send them into motion. And then somewhere we're gonna decide at what point it really looks like they're floating at a speed we like and then that's where we're gonna kind of start our frame from. We've gotta let the particles kind of get into motion first and then you'll see kind of as I go along here. Okay, so I guess we, I, I don't know if we need to go into VPR just yet. We can switch to the camera view right now. So now, again, if we're in camera view, I just did this. I don't know that you have to do this, but I had backed up the camera a little bit. And so what I did is I went to the frame. Let's see, I'm at frame. I don't think this really makes any difference, but I'll come over here and I'm just going to, I had the camera point out a little bit. So on the Z axis, let's see, I have six, negative six, I mean. So the, the camera's backing up a little bit. So if I, if I go into perspective view, you can see this here. So I'll back up a little bit. Oh, you know what I did? I, I messed up, I was on the emitter. Let me, let me go back and fix that. That was a big mistake on my part. So let me go back into, let me come here to, I was on, I meant to be on the camera. Sorry about that. So let me just delete that keyframe there and we'll just pull that back. Okay, so everything's back to the way it was. So just forget I just did that. So make sure you're on the camera. And then what I did is I meant to, went to like 250 here and, and then I changed this to point neg negative six there. There we go. So this just is a little, the camera pulling back just a little bit from the effect, that's all. And like I said, I don't know that that really matters because the we'll see it might have just a slight effect, but not very much of effect because we might not even we might only take from the 250th frame to the 500th frame, but we might take some maybe around 200, but I'm not sure yet. Okay, and then the last thing we got to do is now we're gonna this is really what causes the effect. So if you if we go back into camera view here and we hit play, we don't really see any kind of floating dust effect at all right now, right? what's going to cause this effect is if we go to object and we're on emitter and we come over here and we turn the scroll wheel we're going to go to scale and this is what's going to cause the effect so what we're going to do is we're going to go to about the 60th frame right here right uh, there oops one more frame over and then on the X so it's on zero, zero, zero at the zero frame, basically. And then we're going to move this to the 60, it's, I'm sorry, it's at one, one, one. And then on the 60th frame, we're going to make our adjustments here. So what we're going to do there is, let me see, I got to double check. I did write this down. Okay. So for the X scale, we're going to put in six. For the Y scale, we're going to put in five. And then for the Z scale, we're going to put in 4.5 and like I said you can play around with these effects and see how you like it I mean like I said ex please feel free to experiment now if we go back and we hit play this is what we get and you'll see like starting around the 200 frame you've got that kind of floating particle effect they're in motion and there's an, a low enough resistance that they kind of go on their own inertia still and to me that's what floating dust looks like so we're going to render this out from about i don't know maybe around the 200th frame or something like that and that actually is our next step so what i'm going to do is i'm i've got a i'm going to make a folder on my desktop here so what i've done is i've already made a folder on my desktop and this is this is kind of my workflow here so and looking at this let me look at this one more time let me look at it from the camera view sorry we could look at it from VPR, but it, it doesn't, I don't think it really, and maybe that does give you an idea of kind of what it looks like. But it's, it's flickers because it's, it's rendering. So it's, it's really hard to get a sense of how the particles are acting. So I, I think it's better just to keep it in texture mode to kind of find the frame at which you think there's look like they're floating at the right speed. And I'm going to say right around two, 225, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to render, click on render, we're going to go to render properties, and we're going to go to output, and I'm going to turn that off, and then I'm, of course I'm going to navigate to my uh, dust uh, one folder and select that, 
and then I'm gonna go to general tab here. Like I said, I'm gonna render from, I'm gonna say from 225 to 500 and click that. And then we simply click render scene and uh, we can turn that off, yes. And this actually renders pretty quickly. I'm not gonna waste your time with this, so I'll speed this part of the video up. Okay, I'm back. The video is rendered out of Lightwave now, and the video editing software I use is Vegas Pro. Maybe your software is comparable to this, but what we do in Vegas Pro is we're gonna come in and we're gonna go import, media and we're just going to navigate to that dust folder here and what we do is we click on the first frame we rendered we go open sequence and open and in the sequence comes like that and it automatically compiles it all together okay so now i've got my dust particle video right here and those were rendered out as png files by the way so it's a png sequence coming out of lightweight so all we do here is i come here and i got this photo I'm just using this photo here of a tool shed. If I add a video track here, I can hit Control Shift Q. I'm, oops, I added an extra one I didn't need to. So let me delete that. Then I drag my, I say yes to this. I can stretch out my photograph here. And of course we've got our dust particle video on top of our photograph. And all we need to do in Vegas Pro is change the blending mode. So we go into compositing mode here and we, we shift it to screen and that allows our particles to, it gets rid of the black so we can see our particles. And there's our particles. And then I'm just gonna pull this over and make a loop here. I could tighten this up a little bit here. And then I just render this out of the video editing software. And that's what you end up with. This is just a really basic dust particle effect. I hope you found this helpful. I'm hoping that in your video editing software, you have something comparable to a blending mode so that it gets rid of the black and you just have the dust particles there. And then you can just composite it over a base layer. And that's it. I think it's really great. I, I think it's a really easy thing to do, but I think the main thing is to just play around with the settings and see what you can come up with. And if you have any tips or tricks, please feel free to share them. Thanks so much for watching. I really Really appreciate it. Take care and have a fantastic day.